LinkedIn is a powerful tool for building your network and your listener base if that's where your ideal listener spends their time. But simply sharing a single post each week with a direct link to your audio episode isn't going to get you far. Tando Jacobs, host of Inside Business Analysis, joins me on this episode to share his insights on starting, running and growing an interview podcast in today's podcasting landscape. We cover in this episode the networking power of an interview podcast, how to stand out from other podcasts within your niche, is video essential for podcasts in 2024, tips on creating clickable, searchable episode titles, how to promote your podcast on LinkedIn and start attracting inbound guest requests, the common pitfalls people make when marketing their podcast on LinkedIn, how to put together a simple recording setup that gets you professional results, making a seasonal podcast work, and Tando's three key focuses for his podcast in 2024. So if you're looking to build your LinkedIn network and grow your podcast through LinkedIn, this is the perfect episode for you. Hi Tando, thanks for joining me on Podcasting Amplified. How are you doing? I'm good, Joe. How are you? Yeah, all good, thanks. So Tando Jacobs joins me. He's the the host of Inside Business Analysis, where he brings practical tips, engaging discussions and interviews with industry experts in the business analysis space. He aims to remove the jargon and get to the nitty gritty of how you can improve your business analysis skills and elevate your career. So for a little bit of context, for anyone who maybe isn't aware, um, can you tell us a little bit about your role, about business analysis, about the BA role, please? Business analyst role is uh, primarily a role in technology. Uh, it's, it's a tech role, but it's a non-tech role. Um, and by that, I mean, we work on projects within technology to effectively deliver business change or deliver technology changes that the business was looking to do. Uh, I guess the best way I can exp- I can probably uh, make people think about it who are, aren't aware of it is almost like a, a, an internal consultant. So typically business will bring on an, uh, consultants to help them to, you know, do things differently but usually that consultant is somebody from another company like PwC or Deloitte or something like that whereas a business analyst is then almost the internal version of that role. A business analyst for one um, one company might the role might look at quite a bit different to, to a BA in another company. Yeah absolutely and, and the different companies as well it's also sometimes different industries um, and so different um, different ways of working as well so you know some companies are quite fast-paced mm. And some companies, you know, kind of need to dot every I and cross every T before making any changes. So those differences then will then influence the differences Mm. in the role. And I guess that might have influenced why you decided to do an interview podcast, because it's an interview podcast that that Tando hosts. Um, And I I can see that you've got quite a lot of other content online, like you post a lot of content on LinkedIn and I can see you've been doing blog posts and things. Um, and you've been doing this for about six months. What made you decide to do a podcast six months ago and, and why an interview podcast? Yeah, do you know what? It's, um, the, the, that's such an interesting question. So first of all, I would say that in my role, networking is quite, or at least in technology in general, networking within you know other people in this space is quite a good thing to do for uh, things like career progression or just you know building your 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 name out there, so to speak, right? And so I kind of initially focused on LinkedIn purely for my career progression and networking and kind of being involved in bits and pieces here and there. And when you follow kind of general advice, people say things like, you know, to build your network, follow someone on LinkedIn and, you know, reach out to them, connect with them, maybe, you know, ask them for a virtual coffee Mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But I kind of found that didn't really, it didn't really hit the nail on the head for me. It was kind of like a good start, but actually didn't really... Uh, give me the type of deep connections that I was looking for. So that was kind of the, the one of the, the things that I started to then think about what else could I do differently uh, other than just kind of sending someone a DM on LinkedIn and saying, hey, it'd be great to connect. You know, it doesn't, that doesn't do anything. Um, but then secondly, what I also wanted to do was to ask people who work as business analysts, um, you know, how, how do they do it? you know, in their positions and in their roles. So that gives me some insight into maybe what I could do differently. And so I kind of thought to myself, let me put those two together, uh, network with people, but also ask them questions. And then podcasts kind of felt like the most natural place to do that. As you can imagine, it's a conversational approach. And so 
it started off almost as that kind of selfish, I call it selfish, but kind of selfish uh, approach of be like, I'm trying to build my network, but I'm also wanting to reach out to people who are doing what I'm doing and maybe doing it so much better than I am. And being able to just kind of be the student of the game and saying, right, can you tell me how you would approach this problem? Or how would you, how would you do deal with this situation? And when it started, that was my thinking. About episode five or six into the first kind of season that I did, I just realized that all of a sudden I'm getting I'm getting a lot of uh, traction, especially mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, uh, the podcast itself. You know, it's it's getting a lot of interest, it's getting a lot of traction. So it then made me kind of think actually, when I do think about it, these conversations don't really typically happen in my um, in my field. You know, most of the time, some people may kind of take on a coach or mentor or teacher type position rather than a, let's just have a chat and you tell me what you do sort of thing. Um, and, and I think that difference has kind of then made it become much bigger than I anticipated it would be, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. Like as a networker thing, as an education thing, and also because it's quite niche, isn't it? I mean, have you looked into other BA podcasts? Did you listen to any before or is it quite a kind of a, a tight niche? So there are podcasts that exist and I'd probably say, yeah, m- m- most of them that do exist um, are either the podcast star takes on a teacher mm-hmm. type role to teach you what they know, or they do have interview or conversational type of, of an approach. Um, but I'll be honest, Joe, you know, I'm, I'd probably say I do like content creation and I'm into like, you know, quality content and creating content and looking at all of the different ways of working. And I think most people who do that, um, to their credit, they are good business analysts and they're very knowledgeable in what they do, but they're not great yeah. at content creation. And so there is and that hat that you do have to wear. And, and I felt like I could bring that into the space into, you know, I've, I've got kind of both hats and I'm, uh, and I've really worked on my, I guess my marketing skills in that sense to, to know how to create content that is engaging, is exciting and it feels mm. fresh. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a, in a minute because looking at your content, it is obvious that you have put the effort in. Um, you've got the video and everything as well. Um, and there are all sorts of ways to stand out, aren't there? Like you can stand out by being in a niche, um, but you can also stand out by being the only one mm. who is putting that effort in mm. with the production values. Um, and yeah, like you mm. say, getting someone on a sort of 45 minute call where, you, where you've got the first sort of five, 10 minutes to break down those barriers and then you can just start chatting is it's so much more than just sending a DM yeah. or, you know, a quick, dis- quick, yeah. quick call, quick digital coffee, like you say. Yeah, I absolutely. It really is. And, you know, one of the other things as well, Joe, is that it, I think that's where the, the genuine connections come from as well. You know, I think um, the funny thing is I'm now, uh, uh, even though I've only been doing this for the podcast for six months, um, I'm now on the receiving end of people who are saying, hey, it'd be great to connect, you know, on LinkedIn. I'm like, okay, like thumbs up. <laughs> but like, I'm now seeing how, how I guess, meaningless, not not to kind of say it's fully meaningless, but how much that doesn't really have any depth to it. And, you know, if, if you're in a space where you're trying to really build deep connections uh, in your space, whatever that looks like, uh, then you do have to think about how can I do something that's a little bit different. Yeah, and... Yeah, when you're on the receiving end, like for me, um, as a podcast, you probably get this as well. There'll be certain people who try and connect with you who seem like they actually want to get to know you and make a deep connection, like you say, and then others where, you know, they're touting like a podcast promotion um, service and and they're copying and pasting exactly the same message to thousands of people. Um, (laughs) Yeah. To everyone yeah. else. <laughs> yeah. I've seen yeah. Else. yeah. Um there I've I've found there's also been a lot of rhetoric though about um some of the negative sides of having an interview podcast. Um from people in the podcasting space. Like you can engage with people better with solo podcasts and it's sort of like 
a bit of an echo chamber having a, an interview podcast and it's hard to stand out because there are more interview podcasts and solo podcasts. Um, I think there is definitely a space for it still. And I, I mean, there are, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of super successful interview podcasts. And I see clients starting interview podcasts and getting success from them, um, at least reaching the goals that they want to achieve with it. Did you ever think about doing a solo podcast or did it just not really align with the goals for you? For me, it didn't it didn't really align with the goals um, because, as I mentioned, my initial uh, um, my initial uh, reasoning for doing this was kind of that networking approach. There was an element of building my own personal brand, my own personal professional brand, you know, as a business analyst, which um, in the tech space, or at least to be honest, I would argue that in in the career world these days, you know, your CV is no longer enough. You need a personal brand of sorts, and uh, with that in mind, that did cross my mind. And I did think about kind of taking a solo approach, but I'll be honest, Joe, I kind of thought to myself, the only thing I can really do if I take on a solo approach is to make it valuable to the people listening is to either teach about, edu- to almost take that educational approach or storytelling, um, to kind of tell stories about my experience, things I've worked on, things I've done. But again, <laughs> The, the topic itself that I was talking about, uh, which is business analysis, you know, when I really thought about it and I was thinking about the listener's perspective here, what would make them want to listen? Would, would it just them listening to my musings or would it them getting fresh perspective from two different people at the very least? Uh, because I don't just simply ask questions. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty much like what we do now. I, I really think of it as a conversation. Um, it just so happens that I'm the host. <laughs> that's that's really what I say to myself. And so even within the interview style approach, I'm still weaving in my thoughts. I'm still weaving in my perception and I'm still almost, the, you know, there's been cases where I'm like, you know, thanks for the answer, but I personally, I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't do yeah. that. You know, <laughs> I would do it differently. And, and that type of conversation, I think it's, it, it's probably maybe what um, would help the, the interview style almost stand out and not just feel like it's literally someone's asking questions and someone's answering mm. them yeah and coming across as authentic that you're actually like challenging people on their views not just nodding and then yeah. repeating the same questions every week um but yeah like some and some professions people maybe don't talk to each other as much or you know some niches um and being able to sit in feeling like you're part yeah. of a conversation like what inspired me with this podcast in part was a youtube podcast youtube creators hub that i i listen to um which has helped me as a youtuber because i only know one other person uh like personally who does who, well at the time who did youtube so listening to those conversations between people um and yeah hearing other experiences it, it really helps yeah that point you've made joe is actually is actually much more uh, poignant in the business analysis space mm. the type of jobs that we have and the type of places that we work in you find that you know like i said we work on projects <clears throat> and so you find that typically speaking even though i may work in an, in an organization that has a team of business analysts each of us have our own projects we each are, you know, very specific work that we are in charge of and working on. Mm-hmm. And so even in our uh, immediate places of work, there's almost a disconnect with the people that we work with. And so that's where the conversations for me just kind of stood out to say, no, let's open up the dialogue to have these conversations because it's so easy for us to kind of work in our silos. But actually, if I just kind of have uh, a business analyst on, the, on my podcast every week and I'm asking them questions and opening up that conversation that's already doing something that we don't normally do in our in our day-to-day mm. jobs already so that that was an element of, of it as well yeah in terms of the content creation that's one thing that drew me to podcast because like you say you want to stand out um and there are you know millions of podcasts out there at the moment and I think just by putting things together properly um you can you can stand out just from that alone um 
no, you've got a nice cover art. You do video as well. Your video is on YouTube, isn't it? And also on Spotify. Are you using Spotify for podcasters to? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's nice to have um, the video cropping up as well. Do you find that people react better to the video or do you get more engagement from the audio? I I personally think video podcast is the way to go, 100%. Um, I think there are going to be people who will obviously listen on the go. So that's where the audio element comes in play on on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or even Google Podcasts. But there are people who, who like to listen and watch. And that's where YouTube comes in and even Spotify uh, video comes in. And I'm one of those people. I, li- I like to listen and watch, right? Uh, so I'm basically creating content for somebody who is like me. And I think video is so powerful because when you can link a face to a voice, number one, that's that the level of connection they have with you is much deeper. But also, I think uh, what then ends up happening is that they almost feel like they they know you personally, or at least you feel like you know the person more personally because you kind of recognize their face, um, as opposed to simply just knowing what their voice sounds like on a podcast. And don't get me wrong, podcasting is still powerful because, you know, it, it feels intimate when people are listening to your voice alone. But when you can then add on a face to that, I think that's where the connection is even much more deeper with your audience. Um, I haven't yet, and it's probably a good thing for me to do, to compare how my non-video episodes did against my video episodes in terms of the engagement. Uh, But one thing is for certain that my non-video ones don't do that well on YouTube because obviously it is a video platform. However, to my surprise, you know, my most watched video had something like 300 uh, views, which is obviously small numbers in the content creation world. But considering that I've only just started and putting something on YouTube, um, that already shows that the potential is there for me. Yeah. And I think you kind of got to pair it with the rest of your production. Like you've got uh you've got your show notes you've got your titles and youtube works as kind of a more of a search engine in a way than than some of the podcast apps it's quite hard to find stuff on apple Podcasts and things but looking at your titles and for the listeners if you're running an interview podcast um and you're naming your episodes just whatever the name of the guest is so yeah you know just or like episode five and then just the name of the guest um, if you have a look uh, yeah. inside business business analysis and look at Tando's titles, this is kind of what you should be aiming for, because um, you've got real like problem focused titles. So each episode has a very specific uh, focus. So um, you know strategies when starting a new project, and from BA to senior BA tips to progress your career and so on um how to be a confident business analyst so even though you're obviously going to speak about a lot of different things it looks like you've you've um yeah you found a way of getting those titles really clickable if i'm uh yeah yeah and and, yeah no i appreciate that joe and um uh, absolutely you know it's it's part of ensuring that people know what they they're coming in for um, even when I am approaching guests and having conversations with them, you, you know, I, I, I almost kind of say to them, the conversation go either way, go anywhere, but we need, we know there has to be an anchor to that conversation. Uh, and typically it's, what is that anchor? Sometimes it comes naturally. Some of the, some of the episodes I've done, I haven't necessarily planned what that will be. Um, or the, the, the plan has, <laughs> has not got a kind of plan kind of thing, you know? And so I think, my, my, I guess my thing to that would be just go with it into the episode with some form of idea of thinking about what's the, what's the key theme that I want to touch on with this conversation. And that, I would say that comes from preparation, you know, literally research a guest, 
uh, what are they about? What's their what's their experience and knowledge about? You know, why do you want them on your show and all that kind of stuff? And then as you just think about that, I should give you an insight into roughly what you want out of the conversation. But certainly, you know, my very, very first episode, uh, I can't remember what I titled it. I think I titled it something like how to have a long term career or something like that uh, as a business analyst. In that conversation, that title just came from the simple fact that the person I spoke to had been doing it for like 25 yeah. years, you know, and I kind of picked that out to say, that's the theme, you know, uh, and sometimes it just comes from re-listening back during the editing stage and kind of, kind of asking yourself, what is it that I'm really getting out of this conversation? And then you then start to craft title ideas from that. And then you just pick the one that you think is going to resonate with the audience mm. the best. Yeah. I, it, like you say, you can either research it or or you've chosen a guest um for a specific reason or it just comes about naturally i think often when i'm writing show notes and doing a title for clients there's always some something that comes up as a thread that runs through um i find the naming quite easy like it, it there'll be something that sets the conversation or the guest apart and and yeah people need to capitalize on that especially for youtube like you say because if somebody's searching for example um building a business analyst consultancy like that's a really searchable term and that could bring yeah. people in no absolutely absolutely my my episode that came out um the last two episodes i've come out the one that came out last week uh that one is called how to build how to become a business analyst mm-hmm. in 2024 and that is a yeah. search term um on youtube uh the one that came out yesterday is a uh, business analyst career path that is a keyword in 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 youtube so uh, again this is what i'm touched on earlier about like the element of content creation there is kind of like learning how you know what works what doesn't work um and if you are tagging a video podcast and you put it on youtube at least just just understand the basics of keywords and how they link to your title and and because that's how people will find you mm. at the end of the day on on um, on YouTube. And how do you choose your guests? My guests will typically tick the box off. I usually ask the question of, well, first of all, are they in the field? Because obviously my podcast is career focused. So are they are they a business analyst or have they worked with and around business analysis in some shape or form? And if the answer to that question is yes. Um, then that's that's fifty percent of the way there. Basically, um, the next thing I try to look for is, you know, what what kind of thing could I pull out from them? And that's then looking, you know, LinkedIn is incredible. So if they've filled in their LinkedIn history, the career history, you know, where they've worked and all the rest of it, I can just have a look, glance at that kind of thing to myself. Okay, they've worked here, they've worked here, they've worked here, and maybe I can see a pattern. Maybe they've always worked in government. And I think to myself, hmm, maybe there's a conversation around what's it like working in, in the government sector as a business analyst. That sounds like a good topic. And then I kind of go down that road. Uh, so that's that's the first thing I do uh, if I'm looking for guests. Um, but I'll be honest with you, Joe, probably half of the guests I've had have reached out to me um, through LinkedIn because I post on LinkedIn about the podcast. But even it's a similar concept with them. I, I I don't just say, oh, yeah, great, come on. <laughs> I was think, okay, let me just look at their profile first and see who they are and, you know, what they're about and things like that. But sometimes, you know, I've had guests, uh, quite a few guests who kind of say to me, hey, I want to come on your podcast to talk about this topic. And I'm like, great, you've literally done the job for me. You know, it's and I love the topic. Great. All I need to do is think about the questions and that's 75% of the better done. So so that's kind of the way my approach has been kind of like either if I'm if I'm if I'm looking I'll look for people who take the right boxes in terms of the career, the knowledge and experience. But again, LinkedIn will tell me everything I need to know. Um, and then apart from that, they've reached out to me. There is another hack actually that I'll just add on. And that is if you have any places where your people are, go to go there. So there are a few um, uh, blog, blog sites, should I say, in the business analysis space that a lot of people contribute articles to. And there's also a few newsletters that have guest writers on. And so that's another literally like easy place to find people who are already creating content in some way, shape or form in the business analysis space. I'm just coming at it saying, let's do it as a podcast because you've already written about it either on a blog post or a newsletter or even on LinkedIn, you know. 
So that's another um, kind of real quick way that you can find guests. Yeah, it's a good place to be in if most of your guests are coming from inbound. How hmm. do you... It is. How do you feel that you attract them on LinkedIn then? I know you post quite regularly, um, but it's not like you're just posting, yeah. hi, this is my new episode, and then just copying and pasting the show notes, and that's that. Um, you're kind of... Yeah. It's like companion content. You're posting around the topic as well. Yeah. How do you? How would you say you promote the podcast yeah. on LinkedIn with your content? So it's a, it's it's a, it's pretty much um, like you said. I my my LinkedIn posts are still valuable and they're still they can stand alone without the podcast. Yeah. And that's how I hook. That's how I hook it. I ensure that the LinkedIn post itself gives the person who's reading it you know, um, value. And with my LinkedIn posts, uh, 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 you know, uh, one of the things I make sure to work on, which, which, um, I'll probably say maybe a good 25% of my time, if not slightly more, is spent to just think about that very first sentence, which is the hook. Um, you know, what, what's the thing that, because LinkedIn doesn't show the whole thing immediately, right? It just kind of shows the top part. So kind of think about what's that thing that's going to grab them and make them want mm -hmm. to read the rest. And if I can grab them and they read the rest at the bottom, then I put, listen, if you, you know, if you want to learn more about this particular topic, listen to my podcast uh, episode because I've done it. And then my link is there for them to go check it out. So that's the first way I've done it. Um, but the second way I've done it is any posts that are also created on LinkedIn that are not necessarily directly related to an episode. I still mention at the bottom of that post, hey, if you'd be interested to come on my podcast, reach out to me and let me know. Let's talk. Um, or something along those lines. But I still make sure that I mention the podcast because un unfortunately, podcasting or podcasts, that, you know, there is no search engine that drives people to listen yeah. to your podcasts um, like YouTube. And also, it's not necessarily that most of the time it's not like people are kind of going on apple Podcasts or spotify saying right let me spend the next you know 10 minutes looking for a new podcast that that doesn't really happen people typically just find a new podcast by being by word of mouth or by other means like like linkedin and um instagram and tiktok and things like that yeah i think people underestimate um or well overestimate others willingness to click through and listen to an hour of a podcast for, through a LinkedIn <laughs> post when they haven't offered any kind of value yet. So yeah, stand standing alone as valuable yeah. LinkedIn posts uh, is really good advice. The other thing that is led to is that it, it's then also building my LinkedIn uh, profile, if you'd like. And in my LinkedIn profile, underneath my name, it's uh, you know certified business analyst consultant dash podcast host. And so some people have actually found my profile and I'm like, oh, he's got a podcast. Let me, let me see. And obviously in the about section of my profile, on my LinkedIn profile, I've got the same thing, you know, just making sure that people are aware that I do have a podcast on there. And so, and so there is that cyclical approach of like, people see the post, link into the podcast, they go to the podcast, but there's also a cyclical approach of the fact that because I'm just posting on LinkedIn and I'm showing up on LinkedIn and building my profile on LinkedIn in general, eventually some people might look at my profile to kind of figure out what I'm about, then learn about the podcast that way around. So that's another um, approach that, you know, you get from doing it on LinkedIn, mm. should I say. Yeah. Yeah, I think I need to do better at that, to be honest, just making people aware that I have the podcast because I'm putting out content and I um, and stuff. But yeah, literally just saying in your profile or at the bottom of your posts, I have a podcast, by the way, and if you want to want to join me on there. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I... It's mostly outbound for me, but it sounds like inbound inbound right. really works for you. It does really work for the purposes of, um, I guess, the pipeline, mm -hmm. right? It, it keeps the pipeline going and it keeps that, that momentum going. Um, you did a post recently, didn't you, about um, Riverside versus Zoom versus yeah. another one I can't remember. Recording which locally. Was, the the yeah. tools to use. Right, right. See that that would have been a perfect, like post to then tag yeah, at the yeah. end. I know what you mean. You know, 
come on if you if you, like something like if you know about Riverside come on podcast let's have a chat about it or what do you think let's have a chat about it. so that that's how I approach it um and I also comment on other people's posts I'm, so someone uh, yesterday created a post post in my field around you know what's the difference between a business analyst and a senior business mm-hmm. analyst and I put a comment on there saying um I've got so many questions about this I'd love to bring someone on the podcast to talk about that right you know and that it's little things like that that I just do just to keep keep it on the forefront should I say of shouting out about the fact that I have a podcast yeah. and that again it's a very specific question that's a perfect title perfect focus for an episode BA versus senior BA absolutely yeah so speaking of the uh the tech side of things because as we spoke about your production values are really good you've got a, um good sound and how do Appreciate you that. put your podcast together in terms of your mic and what you're recording with do you have any recommendations so i will try and keep it very practical and yeah, simple yeah. so i'm currently using a microphone which is called a samsung q2u mm. mic literally i can't remember how much it is About you will not even break the bank it's like maybe maybe yeah. even less you know i can't remember it's not even that much but it's the reason why I chose this microphone is because it's it's um, for those of you who know sound, it's both XLR and mm-hmm. USB. Um, so to keep it very basic, you can literally buy this microphone, connect it as a USB into your laptop, and then that's your mic sorted. That's your audio sorted, should I say? Um, camera wise, I'm literally using my MacBook camera at the minute, um, but I know that you can link your iPhone as a camera to then record if you want a much crisper video quality. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the, that because obviously podcast is more about what you say. So it, it, it's good enough for me. And then, um, so so what do you need? You need a computer, a, a laptop or a MacBook, a microphone like this that you can then connect as a USB. And then we're using something like Zoom or Riverside. You know, these are then platforms that you can then actually record the um the podcast on if you have a guest if you're doing it by yourself then you can just get some you can literally if you've got an apple macbook you can use Gar- garage band and then you don't have to think about the camera you've already got the mic you just literally connect it to the usb uh go on garage band select record mic and then choose your name of your mic and then just press record mm. and for me i keep it simple for a reason um this is something that you know i'm i'm doing alongside my day job I'm doing it alongside family. I'm doing it alongside other other adventures. So the simpler it can be, it means it probably takes me five minutes of setup time, and just let's get let's get go, let's 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 get it going. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that because I try not to get too technical. Um, I have a tendency to because my background is in audio, but it's not very helpful to people. But the way you've um, you've kind of simplified it helps because I think people get. People get duped a little bit when it comes to mics and they'll see a, a blog yeah. or a review from somebody who's only ever used one mic uh, anyway um, and they'll get something that doesn't doesn't right, work right. for their room. But yeah, the, the Q2U, Samsung Q2U um, is is a really good option. Like it's very low cost. It's probably cheaper than a lot of the other mics which sound worse. To be it honest. is very um, low cost. And... It is genuinely low yeah. cost. Yeah. Thank- yeah. And the other benefit as well, Joe, for keeping it simple is because, um, at least in my mind, this is what I said to myself. I kind of said to myself, I could buy the, you know, the sure mics mm-hmm. that are way up there in the hundreds of hundreds of pounds and which may sound super amazing. Um, but that doesn't make sense if I'm paying it out of mm-hmm. my own pocket, you know? let the podcast pay for yeah, it. Yeah. That's that's kind of how I thought about it in my head. I was like, let the podcast pay for it. So then all I need to do is just buy the cheapest mic that's still good enough and, and doing my research, this is the one I found. And that's literally the only expense I've done. Yeah, because I recommend the Audio-Technica ATR2100X, which is very similar to the Samsung Q2U. It's almost the same mic in terms of price and, and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a good one. And they're both good one. dynamic mics, which if for people who aren't aware, 
they're less sensitive so you can record them in an office or a bedroom and they're oh, not yeah. going to pick up all the echo and, and room sound and everything um i'm preaching to the choir here i have actually recorded in an office before yeah yeah i've, I've recorded in i literally i was at work on my mm. lunch break i went into like one of the breakout rooms pulled out the mic yeah and, and you recorded it, it and it yeah. sounded crisp it sounded good yeah 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 exactly, exactly yeah and then yeah like you say the shore mics i also recommend the shore mv7 um as a simple usb option mm-hmm. it's like probably about four times the price but you don't get four times the quality so unless you have the money <laughs> yeah. unless you're willing to you know chuck the money in there then um yeah you can get a good setup for, go for it for cheap but I, w- I will say this to to the listeners but for me the the the, the thing about it is i understand because i was there as well like you know you really stress out about the equipment um but if you think to yourself, what's the simplest equipment I can get so that I can stress out more about the content? Yeah. You know, let me just stress out about like, what is it that I'm doing? Is it going to be valuable? Is mm-hmm. it going to be useful? Then we can worry about the other stuff later. You know, um, you can worry about, okay, you know, for example, I, uh, there's, there's quality things that I'm thinking about, you know, better camera and uh, better setup behind me and all the rest of it. But that will come much later. The thing that's going to be the core of, of your podcast is going to be what is it that yeah. you're talking about, and are people do people care enough to listen to it? Um, they just need to be able to hear you clearly. So the mic bit, I understand, but just get a simple mic that does the job, and then just mm. take it from there. Cool. And you've been producing episodes pretty much weekly, consistently, which is great. I think that's something a lot of people struggle with as well. When when they start podcasting, they realise just how much work it takes. How do you make sure that you get an episode out on time every week? What's your kind of, because uh, you say you've got a simple setup. What about in terms of, you know, getting the the edit, the video, the show notes? How do you make sure that you get that done each week? Yeah, no, that that's so that's the big one. So, um, so first of all, just, just to clarify, I actually have a seasonal okay. podcast. I've decided to make it seasonal. Um, so season one started in, uh, I can't remember now July-ish, exactly when, um, uh, but then it finished in yeah, November. Yeah. yeah it was, I think it was mm. the end of July, I think. Um, so season one started end of July, finished in end of November. And then season two just started beginning of January. And I'm taking that at the moment. I'm planning to take that all the way through until the end of March. So three months. And the process then of like ensuring that, you know, I'm consistent with it is again, first of all, ensuring that I've got the people to come on the podcast. That's kind of the main thing. And, th- and then I try and almost schedule them as soon as possible. So all the, um, the January podcasts were actually recorded mm-hmm. in December when I was not posting but i was still creating the content and then in january right now i'm then almost creating for february um so you can i kind of try and do it that way where i'm not always i'm not necessarily chasing my tail now if i was doing a solo uh podcast i probably would could get away with literally record Mm -hmm. upload approach but because it's an interview schedules and all sorts you know you have to really be on the ball with that so that's how i do that side of things now in terms of the actual process you know once it's recorded i personally edit using uh cap cut I, f- I just find it super super simple but that's it's like cheat in in the sense that i'm not necessarily new to video editing so you know that works for me i edit on that and then i do kind of do the whole scheduling and uploading on all the various places um, but that's that's still time, right? Because you need the time to listen back through the whole show, make the cuts, figure out what the key anchor is, and you know make sure everything makes sense. But and then I also have um, kind of uh, snippets off the show within the first thirty yeah. seconds to one minute uh, before we get into the conversation. So all of that is probably where the time element comes it takes more time to do that than to find the person and record um but that's because that's the quality that i'm 
you know, that's the standard I'm setting for myself to say, this is the quality that I want. You could genuinely just record and, and upload without necessarily cutting things out. Um, maybe just cutting out the beginning bit where you, you know, you have your initial intros and cutting out the end bit where there's mm-hmm. that awkward silence. But apart from that, that's, you can keep it very simple. Um, but it's, I use Trello, so that's kind of how I keep on top of like the dates and the timelines that's of where good. things are, you know, uh, something called a Kanban yeah, yeah. board. Yeah, a scheduler, so it helps with like, what's what what which episodes am i currently you know what's due to be recorded what's due to be edited what's being scheduled and you know just kind of having that view and that keep, keeps me on on the ball of being like okay you know this is in place and that's happening nice yeah so seasonal um is, is a good way if if you're fi- going to find yourself burnt out or, or whatever like Obviously, if you are producing weekly episodes, then you might get traction a little bit faster. But at the same time, if you feel that without that break, you're going to burn out and it's going to end up with the podcast, um, you know, stopping or whatever, then obviously it's not not worth it. So it is a fine balance. Um, And as long as your audience knows what to expect, do, do you mention that it's the end of the season and the start of a new season? I I actually didn't. Uh, mm. Funny enough, um, I, I kind of I, I was meant to do it and then just just didn't end up doing it. Um, but the the I think yeah, it's an interesting one because I didn't mention it, <clears throat> and then um, and I was getting emails being like, oh, you know, is a podcast still on type of ah, thing. So okay. I had to then yeah. do it in retrospect. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think certainly we'll do it more. Uh, seasonal now and um, so, sorry we'll keep to the season but we'll definitely kind of mm-hmm. announce it more to say right you know this is second season is going to come to an end X, X and the next date uh, and then we'll pick up season three at some point in the future for me personally the reason why I do a season is just simply because um, it's an interview podcast and it's in in a career field um, but because it's not like my I guess my my uh, my immediate focus right it's, it's not the number one thing in terms of the things I'm working on. Um, that's, I kind of thought, the best way I can just ensure that the quality delivered is still going to be really good mm-hmm. is by keeping it seasonal. Now, the gap between the seasons, you know, season one and season two was like a month gap. So that doesn't quite feel seasonal. Um, I don't know what the gap between season two and season three will look like. Uh, but you know, it's just one of those things where I'll see when the time comes. Um, but the, you know, the rea- the reality is, Joe. At this moment in time, I'm still f- I'm still early on, and I'm still kind of experimenting what works, what won't work. Uh, who knows? Maybe it might end up being the thing that I'm doing, and being the thing I'm doing every single week without taking any breaks. But we'll see. Yeah, and I guess just seeing how your audience respond to it. Like, if you find people aren't listening much over Christmas time anyway, and sort of early summer then it might be a perfect time to have a break without even really yeah. affecting the, the the stats too much exactly exactly that so any other plans for 2024 we're in early in the year um and i know mm. like you say you're just starting the new season anything else you're hoping to to change about the podcast at all or have you got some guest ideas in mind and things yeah, so one, I mean, there's a few things that I've got in my head, but in, in, in the more immediate things that I'm really wanting to do is to build my email list. Uh, so I do have an email list, but I don't, I don't primarily, I don't actually promote the fact that I've got one. So that's something I need to do. Um, because, you know, just in the world of content creation, you know, it's, it's very good to have your email list for this, for the, for nothing else but owning your audience or having a direct line to your audience, should I say, as opposed to going through social media or algorithms kind of thing. So so that's my my media focus. Uh, so I'm looking into, you know, how to start building my email list a bit more. And, um, and then from a guest perspective, it's really going to, for me, it's going to be more about having really uh, known people in the space. You know, season one was a full of kind of, uh, colleagues or people I've connected with through other means, uh, but this time around I'm, I'm 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 targeting people who already have large followings themselves, or you know they've written books and 
articles and all sorts of things in this space. So I'm actually then going to tap into their uh, expertise a bit more and uh, connect with them in that way. So that's that's my plan for season two. Uh, and then the third thing is to then actively or continuously promote it uh, on on be more active on LinkedIn for the f- you know for the sake of promoting my personal brand, but also building up the community around the the podcast. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely be showing up on LinkedIn more because at the minute I've been posting once a week in line with the episode that comes out once a week. Uh, but actually, maybe I'm thinking if I do that twice a week, that second post could then just nod to the fact that I have a podcast, but just kind of continuously deliver content on LinkedIn to stay active on the platform uh, and to kind of build that space there. And and those are really the probably say the three main things that are on my mind about the podcast, about next steps. Yeah, good to have some goals. And I feel like a lot of those could apply to to uh many podcasters building email list securing known guests and posting more on linkedin which i think we all need to do <laughs> yeah. well this has been, it's been really interesting finding out about this finding out more about your role um as a ba and obviously what you do on on linkedin and and your podcast setup and everything so thank you um and of course anyone who wants to have a listen to the podcast inside business analysis you can find it anywhere you get your podcasts Um, And at least go in and have a look at those titles for the episodes, especially if you have an interview podcast, because they're they're bang on. Um, And you're at TandoJacobs.com and Tando Jacobs on LinkedIn. Is there anywhere else? people should be finding you or have i covered it uh, you've no you've covered it joe and um i mean we do have inside business analysis.com as well and um that's uh, yeah. kind of primarily for the for the, for the podcast but no 100 percent, i really appreciate you uh bringing me on to the to your podcast and i've really enjoyed our conversation and um you know i continue to look forward to your post because obviously you're you're helping me create better content as well so um i really appreciate the work you're doing cool no problem speak to you soon tando Thanks for listening to Podcasting Amplified. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to follow or subscribe on your favourite podcast platform. We'll be back next time with another conversation offering more insights to take your podcast to the next level and help you to achieve success. Happy podcasting.